Okay, this video is on uh, thermal expansion. Um, this isn't too bad. The, the equation for thermal expansion is the change in length due to temperature is going to equal to the, uh, it's called the thermal coefficient of expansion. And this is unique for whatever type of material it is. And all you're going to do is you're going to multiply that by the change in temperature, so we'll call it delta T. That's temperature, not sh uh, shear stress and then multiply it by the length. That's going to give out how much uh, the object is going to expand. And usually what you're going to do with these, especially when your object is trapped, it cannot expand, okay? Because it, it because these are fixed. A and D are fixed. It's not going to move. So as, as the temperature increases, this object will expand, this object will expand, this object will expand. So what you need to do in this case is try to find out how much load needs to be applied to one end of this to reduce what each one of those uh, expansions, what, how much the change in length would be to temperature. So basically, um, all you're really going to do in this is go back to the equation that um, deflection, when apply a load, is going to equal to PL over AE. And really what you're going to do is you're going to t take that and you're going to subtract the thermal expansion, which is equal to this value, And you're going to set that equal to zero because it can't go anywhere. And that's all you're going to do in these problems. So let's start um, working this right now. <clears throat> so what we can do here, we can draw, let me get the pen back. We can draw a free by diagram each one of these members. So if I look at this guy right here, then its free by diagram would look something like this. This would be force A. So A is going to push coming back this way. And then again, this would have to push back down this way here. So we can call that the F of A and then F of B. Okay, again, since this is stepping down, and the, the uh, solution manual doesn't do it this way, but this will work. I think it helps you understand things better anyway. So now we're looking at the, co the bronze piece. Then this is F of B, then F of B has got to push this way here. I'll move that out so you can see it. And it, again, its balance has to go back this way too. So we'll make this F of B. And this would become F of C. Again, this is the bronze piece. And this is the aluminum piece. Okay, now we'll do the other piece, which is the stainless steel. All right, we'll draw something a little thinner. And again, do the same thing. If F of C goes this way, it has got to go back this way here. All you're doing is just following Newton's laws. So this is F of C, and this is F of D. Let me get rid of that force. I had drawn that up there earlier. All right, so these are free by diagrams. Now, all we're going to do here is use this guy right here. And we're going to say that um, no deflection can occur. So all we're going to do is we know that PL over AE. So we're going to say the force. Because you can look right now and tell every one of these forces is the same because they're just equal and opposite forces. So we're use just the F value, okay, times the length. In this case, it will be 4 feet. You're going to multiply that by 12 inches over 1 foot. That's going to cancel out your feet. Now you're in inches in length. And then we're going to take that. We're going to divide it by the cross-sectional area here. Now that piece is round, so it's going to be pi r squared. We come to pi. It has a radius of 6, not 12. And then we're going to multiply it by the value of E of the material itself, which is aluminum, which is 10.6 times 10 to the 6. Okay? Now, so that's going to try to compress the part. However, this is going to make it expand. So we're going to subtract that because we know this has got to equal to 0. You look up the thermal expansion of aluminum. And it's going to be this value here, 
0.8 times 10 to the minus 6. You, you look at the change in temperature. We're going from 110 to 70. Zero. And then times the entire length, which in this case will be 4. I'm just going to do 4 times 12 this time. Okay, so that's going to be what this one's going to be. Expand down, and now we'll work with this one. So we'll do plus. And again, you can change the signs of this. For example, you could make this plus and make this negative, since this is trying to compress it. It's not going to make a bit of difference. All right, so now we go back to F. Okay, and then we're going to do the length of this guy, and this guy is going to be, what, 6 times 12? And I'll just leave the unit conversions like this over the cross-sectional area. This piece here, the bronze piece, has a diameter of 8, so we'll do pi times 4 squared times the um, modulus elasticity of bronze. That value is 15 times 10 to the 6. Okay, minus its um, thermal expansion, which is going to be 9.6. Again, this is unique for the material. Times 10 to the 6, I'm sorry, minus 6, times the change in temperature, and I'm just going to do 40 this time, 110 minus 70. Times this length, and we'll check the length of that. The guy is 6, so we'll just do 6 times 12. We'll put a plus. We're going to come all the way down here and continue this. We go to this guy, it'll be 4. Again, you're going to multiply it by the length. The length is 3. Times 12. Over the area, which will be pi. Again, check the radius. The radius is diameter is 4, so it would be 2. Squared times the modulus elasticity of stainless steel which is going to be 28 times 10 to the 6. Okay, you're going to minus the thermal expansion. Again, for stainless steel, it's going to be 9.6 times 10 to the minus 6 times the change in temperature, which again, we're just going to do 40 times the length, and the length is what, 3 times 12? And we know that this all has to equal to zero. And again, it can equal, equal zero because A is fixed and D is fixed. This object cannot push these walls out. Now, all you're going to have to do here is basically, this is nothing more than math. And you have one unknown, F. F is here, F is here, F is here. This is the same force. Solve for F. And I'm going to trust that the solution manual did it correctly. And that would give me two, seven, 7.69 kips. That would be my force. And now to find my stress, I just do P over A. And I have to do it for each of the, the materials. So for the aluminum, it would be 27, 277.69. And again, you can change this back into multiply it by 1,000 if you want to. So you could do um, 277,690. Uh, you can definitely do that. Now the only thing is um, then we would divide this by the, the cross-sectional area, which again on that one's going to be pi 6 squared. And that would give me 2,460 PSI. I use the same thing for the bronze. Use the same load throughout. Pi and it's four squared. You work that and it gives you five thousand five hundred and fifty two, I believe it is. Or five hundred and twenty, sorry. Change that. 5,520 PSI 
and then the last one is to do the stainless steel over pi times the radius squared which is 2 squared and when you run that value you get 22,100 psi and that's all you really have to do then it's not too bad circle these answers circle these answers and circle these answers okay just follow these steps in the problem and you'll be just fine